Oh boy, oh boy, here we go again. Election Day Tuesday is upon us. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. Hope you made some money out there in those wild, wild moves we saw this afternoon. But it's back to work tonight, though. Tuesday evening, getting ready for what could be the best trading day of the week. Wednesday is right around the corner. I have a lot of great trades setting up for what is known as the Reaction Day coming tomorrow. And as always, I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video to make sure you get a game plan to make some money tomorrow. Before we jump in and talk about all my favorite trades for tomorrow, make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, will you? Hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in tonight and supporting this YouTube channel. But enough of the intro, right? Wednesday is not going to trade itself. Let's get ready for what really could be a, a very good trading day tomorrow as we kind of sandwich in between the election today and that big inflation number coming on Thursday. So, where are the best trades setting up for tomorrow? Well, boy, wild, wild session, wild end of the session today on the S&P and the NASDAQ. We talked about this. We knew it might get a bit squirrely right towards the end of the session today. Lots of wild moves right now. Big move up, big move down, big move back up. It's a range right now on the E-mini and uh, on the, on the S&P and the NASDAQ right now. And if you know my style, you know I love me some ranges, right? We're talking breakouts. We're talking fake out breakouts right traps head fakes lots of there's lots of potential money making trades on both the long side buyers have some great reversal opportunities here right now the sellers have some great shorts off the highs and breakouts going lower so not to worry we're going to cover both sides of the s p and nasdaq in tonight's video oil's pretty straightforward nice strong move down there on the oil right now the bears have all the control. The bears have it right now. We assume that sellers are waiting to sell retracements, short the bounces. And we'll talk about tonight. I got a couple key areas overhead. And of course, depending on where we get the entry signal, that will determine the type of entry setups that we use here. So there'll be a, a bit of a master class on momentum timing on oil here tonight. So you guys are in luck for a good part of the video tonight on the crude oil. So we're going to go over all these trades here in just a few moments. Before we do that, though, let's all make sure we check the calendar for tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is kind of known as the reaction day, right? It's the day coming in. It's the day after a major event in the market, right? Obviously, there's no major news here today. On Tuesday, there's no major news tomorrow besides that weekly inventory report uh, for oil traders. But, you know, as I mentioned earlier, or as, you know, if you've been living under a rock, we have a very highly anticipated midterm election. And hopefully, the best thing for us for tomorrow will be hopefully they get their act together and get all the votes counted because you know what might happen, right? We might, we might get back to our desk tomorrow and there still might be some counts going on right tomorrow and into the next couple days here so hopefully hopefully we'll know some sort of certainty tonight and the markets can take that and run with it here for tomorrow we got a wide open day tomorrow right now one thing you might not be aware of and this will apply to anybody in asia or in europe is that we are going to hear from china overnight it'll some it'll be sometime between midnight and two o'clock 2 30 in, in, in the morning eastern time of course uh, China has their CPI and their PPI numbers, which of course are huge inflation numbers. Those will be posted overnight sometime between midnight and 3 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. It's usually somewhere around 2 o'clock, 2.30 Eastern time. We'll have to wait and see. They don't do a very good job at telling us exactly what time they're going to be releasing that stuff. So be aware of that. That obviously won't affect us too much in the, in, the, in the U.S. session tomorrow in our trade room. But if you are in Asia, if you are in Europe, be aware there could be some, there could be some shake and bake overnight, right? Along with as the numbers come in from the election. So overnight, overnight could really be a wild one again tomorrow there really isn't any major news for us to worry about unless of course right until we get to that 10 30 uh, that weekly oil report tomorrow which really has not been moving the oil markets around as much as opec's commentary we seem to be hearing from opec almost every day this week right now so reaction day tomorrow careful overnight as the numbers start coming in and then don't forget to tomorrow afternoon we've got that big cpi report coming in on thursday so tomorrow 
tomorrow afternoon might be another one of these wild ends of the day just because everyone's going to kind of batten down the hatches, buckle their seatbelts, had that CPI number coming out, which you could easily argue is one of the biggest news reports here of the month of November. So keep that in your radar for tomorrow, and we'll talk more about the game plan for CPI in tomorrow night's video newsletter. Don't you worry. We'll get you covered on that. Now, Back to our charts here right now because the money is made on the charts, of course. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades on each one of these markets here tonight. If you're serious about making money in these markets right now, make sure you watch all the way to the end because you will learn something new throughout each step of this video here tonight. And I do try to save the best stuff all the way to the end. So I'll give you a reason to stick around all the way to the finish. I'm going to go S&P and SPY. We'll go NASDAQ and the QQQs. And we'll go OIL and the USO to finish up the video newsletter here this evening. Now, first of all, upper left-hand corner, all of these charts are tick charts. That's a 10,000 tick chart. You're more than welcome to use time charts. I think tick charts make everything easier. So tick charts, upper left-hand corner. And also be aware, too, this is the E-mini and the SPY. The E-mini and the SPY are in, in the NASDAQ and the QQQ. They're very similar right now. So just be aware, pretty much everything we talk about on the E-mini or the SPY can be applied to NASDAQ. Stack in the QQQs. With that said, there are two key insights on this chart right now that are telling us where the most likely winning trades or biggest money making opportunity is going to be here for tomorrow. The first one is really for the most part, it's range rotation, right? It's range rotation. What I mean by that is we have a trading range. And you'll notice the market kind of gets chopped up in that trading range, goes up, comes all the way back down, runs all the way back up. And now at this point, we expect the rotation to continue and rotate lower, rotate higher, right? Rotate lower. Obviously, again, there's an election coming in tonight. That could easily get broken out of this range. And we'll talk about breakouts here as we go deeper. As of right now, as of right now, it looks like we have what I call rotation off the high. So we're coming off the high, and it looks like we're trying to rotate back down again. Once we get down to those lows, can the buyers hold and back up? Or do the bears, the sellers, get a breakout going lower? We've got some great, great breakout levels waiting down below for some bearish objectives at 37.38 and a quarter. That's a big clue right now because it tells us that as the market tries to rotate here, there could be some great short opportunities going lower, could be some reversal opportunities as well. Now, next big clue, strong moves. We have strong moves everywhere right now, which are very common in range bound markets. If there's if there's one if there's one specific type of market that's more known for big moves back and forth, it's a range because ranges are balanced markets and they're going to rotate back and forth. Now, when it comes to strong moves, anytime we see a strong move, for example, strong move going down, what do we expect? We expect a retest of that low. And once we get it, we then look for either reversal back up or we look for a breakout going lower. More importantly, though, recency recency what is the most recent strong move the most recent strong move is the one we saw late in the session here today that is a very big deal because they're going to want to with that strong move up they're going to want to retest that high and once they get that retest of the high or if they fail to retest the high because of overhead resistance now we wait for do we get that reversal back down again or do we break out and go higher? Now, as you can see here, this is quite a big task for the buyers. The buyers clearly have some, it's, it's, it, the buyers have to really show us a good breakout because it's not gonna be enough just to retest this high. They've also got that high overhead. Now, the buyers have a lot of strength right now. They're gonna have to get us, right, breaking out and their objective will be up above at 39.07. Those are those FOMC highs, the Dow, already hit those highs earlier on here today. So that could be a leading indicator for the S&P tomorrow. Those are the two most important clues right now. Now that we know that information, how do we make money off that stuff? Well, I'm going to cover the law. I'll cover going up. I'll cover going down. We're going to cover both directions here right now. But let's play the most recent. The most recent scenario right now is that strong move going higher. So you got to think right now, the buyers, of course, would love to get a breakout going higher. 
That, again, is a very big task at hand, though. That's not going to be as easy as it looks, right, and just simply drawing on it. They're going to push through and really run through. If they can't, the Bears have great spots here to be a seller off that high here. So we know we have that run going higher. We know they're trying to retest that high. At this point now, there's a lot of ways we can make money shorting off the high or buying a breakout going higher. One easy way here right now is to see them go back up and retest that trend line coming down overhead. Then as the buyers now try to force their way up into that high, remember, ranges are magnets. If I can get buyers to grab this thing and try a couple times to buy into that trend line, think about where their stops are gonna be, right? Their stops be right below that low. We've already accomplished what's called the pendulum swing, right? The amount we go below the range is right about the amount we go above the range. So right now, that is a lot of overhead resistance. I would love to short this thing if we get the buyers trapped in I always look to look for the buyers trying twice off that moving average, think about where their stops are, and then once we get a good decent signal candle, we can short that sucker right back down into that trading range, take some profit off at the low of that range, leave a runner for sure down to the opposite side of that trading range. Now, I'm going to talk about how to buy off this low in a moment, so don't go clicking off just yet here. What if we go higher though here, right? What if we keep going? You know, what if we do end up up around? On these highs. This is really where the fun really begins. If we do end up up around those highs, what I'm looking for in this situation is, is very similar we saw back here. Where we run up, the buyers try a couple times, once, twice, we sell into those stops, but then more importantly, as the market tumbles lower, we can then find that channel off the low, channel off the high, and as I always say, we can look for that first test is the best test, right? We talk a lot about these on this video, on these videos, and this is a great example of a situation where that can be used. So as we go higher here now, think about now again, right? Range below us, the buyers, although they have a lot of momentum, they're running right into overhead resistance. And I'll tell you, the buyers may be able to break this thing higher. They might be able to break this thing higher. And we'll talk about the game plan on that in a moment. But if they can't, right? If we start seeing this thing pop up here, run right into overhead resistance and the buyers now begin to struggle, right? They try once, they try twice. Where are their stops? As I always tell my students, think about where their pain is, right? And just put your sell order or wait for the signal candle. We talk about signal candles a lot in our free trading course, as you guys know. Look for that short now coming off that high. And then don't forget, our job is not done yet. Once we get that tumble off the high, where's the market want to go? It's going to want to go back to the other side of that trading range. It'll want to go back to the other, all the way to the other side of the daily range. And so now I'm going to go out. I'm going to draw a trend line off those lows. I'm going to mark a channel off that high, right? And then what I like to do is I like to drill down and find some prior swings. Okay, not always easy on these slower time frames. I don't trade a 10,000 tick chart in the trade room, right? But I'll, I'll, I'll zoom it in. We'll drill it down to our faster time frames and we'll look for things like traps, right? Above prior swings off that high. Um, I'll look to get above the 21 moving average because when you get above the moving average, you look for failures as buyers come in and try to buy it. That's a failure, sell into stop losses, failures oftentimes what lead to pullbacks etc etc these are the, these are all the same entry patterns right the failure off the high the traps the pullback combos these are all the same entry patterns you guys are learning right now in our free trading course which reminds me i know that most of you guys and gals are taking the free class learning the setups sending me great screenshots of winning trades you're taking all off the free trading course by the way i love that stuff but listen if you're here for the first time if you haven't taken the free trading course yet, what I'll do is I'll put a link up here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link and take my free trading course because the strategy that I teach in that free class will show you a remarkably simple trick to know, first of all, where the winners will be each day, but more importantly, much more importantly, where the losses are more likely to be so you can avoid those losses. Uh, if you're sick and tired of missing the best trades each day or if you're taking too many losses right now, take that free course. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full 
full-time trading, making a career out of this. Great roadmap there, plus hundreds of examples of how we apply this strategy right inside that free trading course. That way, so we can grab that link and learn this stuff. That way, if we do get that run up, you'll know what you'll know what a two try failure looks like. You'll know most importantly the entry setups I use to grab those shorts off the high of that channel. All right, so make sure you grab the free course. You'll know stuff. That's how I want to short this thing as we go. Now, one more thing here. We may end up running up, pulling back, and double topping, right? That's even better. That's even better. At that point now, same thing. One, two, short those, right? That failure, grab that channel, and back in, we go from there, right? So even if they make it up, right, run up to the top of that high, pull back, double top it, same idea, right? Same idea. Trap in those buyers and use their stops as fuel to run this thing back down into that trading range. Now, of course, the big question is, is what does it take for a breakout? Well, before we have a breakout, we always want to make sure we know how much space do we really have to work with. And there's definitely plenty of space overhead there to make some money on a, on a breakout. There are a lot of different ways I use breakouts in my trade room. This one's a bit tricky, though, because even if we get, like I said before, even if we get a move through the high, we still have to deal with that high up there. That's why I said the buyers have a big, they have a big job ahead of them. They could easily do it. You know, they, they can easily do it. Election coming in, who knows, right? This, this, is, this is definitely easily possible right now. But really what they're going to do is they have to give us probably one of two types of breakout patterns. One will, will, will be the first, will, will be the, uh, the one, two, three breakout. So let's say, for example, we retest the high. We have to retest the high. Then we have to go in and hold the pullback. Now, remember, at this point, we're looking for the buyers trying a couple times and that short back down again, right? Look left, you'll see an example of that. If they, if they don't struggle, if they hold that pullback and they begin to really jump off that moving average. Now, remember, this really needs to jump, right? It needs to be very convincing because, again, this is one big trading range. If it, if it just pops up, it could easily roll back over again. So be very careful getting too aggressive buying high on these. But once we get that one to jump and we really clear out of that range now, now we can easily find a new channel. I can mark off the high. Remember, I always draw my channels backwards, and you'll learn a lot about this stuff in that free trading course, right? Mark that, mark that trend line, find that channel now. As always, I, I like to drill down, find some prior swings, uh, traps, right? Failures, pullback combos, right? Off of the moving average. Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy game plan on this. One thing you want to keep in mind, right, is that the first leg... And the third leg, uh, trending markets, breakout markets, they love to go in threes, right? So one leg, two leg, and three leg. The first leg, right, and the third leg are, are usually very symmetrical, right? So in this example, it's that breakout, that first leg, right? Then you get the breakout leg, then anchor it off of the pullback, and that's going to give you kind of a good objective area overhead. Again, we have a pretty good idea of where the market wants to go already, right? That 3907. The next type of breakout pattern will be a pop and grind breakout, right? The next breakout pattern will be a pop and grind. So a pop and grind is really, really simple. We're going to pop up, take out those highs. Now we're not going to pull back to the moving average and jump. Now we're going to grind higher. And the grind higher, the, the grind is usually a pretty easy giveaway. Once you see a market grinding higher, then you know, then you pretty much know here the opposite side of the market, in this case, the sellers, right? The sellers who shorted that big drop over the FOMC announcement. Remember, the FOMC highs are overhead here right now. So if this thing pops up and begins to grind higher now, it's pretty simple. Find that trend line off those highs. Right, bring it down off that big low, and I know this seems a bit wonky, right? It's a bit, it's a bit backwards, right? But that's the way that's it works really well like this. We want to find that trap, right, or find that failure. Want to buy that first test off of that low, right? So if we do pop up, right? If we pop up. We pop up, and now for whatever reason, the bears are nowhere to be found, and the market can, you know, keeps on grinding higher here. I can mark that high. I can mark that low. Again, look for those prior swings. That's usually where the best entries are going to be. I'm keeping pretty simple right now. Trap, failure, pullback combo. Again, first leg, 
third leg, right? That'll give you an idea of how this far, how this thing might go. Which reminds me too, one last scenario here. We oftentimes see V tops and V bottoms on these ranges. So let's say, for example, we do go higher, but we don't see the buyers hold and jump. We don't even get the one, the two and back down. Now we basically slice and we run right back down into that trading range. Now what do you do? These are notorious for those popping grinds going lower. And these are pretty easy money. I, I would say these are probably one of my favorite, favorite trades because it's, you know, I can't say guarantee, you know, it's nothing's guaranteed, but these are very tough to lose money on right here, right? Because now you've got that momentum turning off the high, the grind down gives away, there's no buyers at anywhere to be found, right? And then once it pops up, everybody will jump in on that short. It's almost like a, it's like a V top, right? Kind of a V top reversal off of that high. I would say right now that that is probably my favorite reversal pattern right now in these, in these wild markets almost almost a guaranteed winning trade you're gonna mess it up pretty good to lose money on that one so those are some ways to buy it as we go higher those are some ways to short this thing as it goes as it goes higher now next question is what if we go lower right can i make money going down can i buy it off that low what's a breakout look like those are really really good questions and anything is possible as we go into the election count later on this evening how about some nasdaq now again the nasdaq and the qqqs are they're almost identical right there's a little bit of a difference here you'll notice on the nasdaq because the the pendulum swing has not quite been completed yet it's probably because of that trend line coming down right so Think of the NASDAQ right now, same basic idea, right? We've got range rotation, okay, range rotation. Mark goes up, rotates lower, goes up. Usually, excuse me, usually we're going to rotate back down again. In this example, though, right, in this situation, we don't have that pendulum swing, which we did have on the S&P. So NASDAQ, because of that recent strong move, right, same idea, strong move down, bears want to retest, strong move up. What does a strong move up tell me? It tells me that even if I think the mark's going to roll lower, I still have to respect these buyers because it is a pretty strong move, right, going higher. That's why I mentioned earlier, right, if we can get these buyers trapped in up here, then I can look for that short back down again. Don't be surprised, though, if the buyers find a way up into that pendulum swing and then finally get that short, one of those shorts that we talked about uh, earlier on this video. So that's one one of the only kind of big differences here right now, NASDAQ overhead. NASDAQ has 11, 4, 34, and 3 quarters. That is the buyer's objective coming in overhead. The sellers, of course, they want to retest that low. And if they can get that break down below that low, the big bearish objective is that 10,708, which is basically the FOMC low, right? The FOMC has pretty much dominated the major highs and major lows over the last, you know, week, week and a half here, right? Came out last Wednesday. So knowing all this information right now, we covered a lot of this already on the S&P. How do we short this thing as we're going lower? Well, first of all, because of this trend line coming down, this is, uh, you know, last night we talked about, you know, bear spray, right? Bear repellent on a rising support trend line. You could easily call this bull repellent, right? Some bull spray, wh whatever you want to call it, right? I, I have some fun with you guys on this video. Where I'm getting at with this right now is if this market was to begin to kind of grind down here right now, where does the market want to go? It wants to go back and take out that low. So I find it very hard to believe there won't be some money to make with some traps above some prior highs here. Again, the key is going to be getting that kind of grinder going lower. We may not get it. You know, we may not get it. The market may just simply slam lower and we may not have much of a chance of getting in on the pullback or selling into the retracement as they call it, right? So that is definitely something I'm watching for uh, if we go lower. What you really want to think about right now, though, is is if this thing was to roll over and go all the way back to that low right now, what's the first thing? It's a major support level, but that's a lot of momentum for the bears, right? I mean, think about that, right? If we find our way down here, that is a ton of bearish momentum, which means it's going to be easy, I think easy, for the bears to steamroll this thing and keep on running. 
Also, too, it's going to be a little bit difficult for the buyers here. They're going to have to trap in some of those bears because they're not going to have momentum on their side. And if you don't have momentum on your side, if momentum, if momentum's on your side, you can easily get lucky, right? You have that edge, you know, the, the 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 wind at your back, right? If you don't have momentum at your side, you need some other catalyst like a stop run of some sorts to juice this thing going back up into that trading range. So those are kind of the key components here, right? So as as we go lower how would i buy this thing right how would i buy it well knowing that and again looking at this v bottom over here it's like oh just buy it it'll go right back. no probably not well it might it might uh the problem is uh, v bottoms are very easy in hindsight right they're not exactly easy in real time most of the time when you see a market make that big of a move like that it's going to retest and so simply buying into that low usually is going to be a losing proposition what i want to do is if i get down around these lows again with, again, all of that momentum, there really are kind of two key scenarios that I'll be looking for. One is a crown reversal. We talk about these quite a bit. Whenever I'm trying to pick a bottom, right, in a range or a bear market, and I'm worried about momentum, it's a great location for the entry, right? Great spot to be a buyer, but horrible momentum. Whenever I have momentum uh, against me like this, I need something that's going to give me a catalyst. And so what I'll do is I'll look for what's called a crown reversal. Now, this crown reversal pattern is distilling down a lot of real really important aspects, which may not be apparent to you right away. First of all, because of that strong move lower, momentum is not with me. I have to get some sort of catalyst, and the catalyst is a stop run. And the best way to get some stops to get run is to let those bears try twice right then their stops are sitting right above that high and that will give me that juice that i need to run this thing back high right again if we don't have momentum on our side we need something else as the catalyst so a two try rule or a two try failure as we call it in our trade room very very important however we also know that whenever we have a lot of strength going lower what's going to happen the bears are going to want to sell it as it goes higher right? Because of course, sellers, they want to sell high. So it's very, very important whenever we have a strong move down, like I'm, like I'm kind of portraying in this example, it's important we get traps right off of that low because that's going to prevent me from running this problem. What is a very common problem in situations like this is this, right? This is a, this is a reversal killer. And so what happens is we get those strong moves down. We look for the two tries here, but if I'm trying to buy, if I'm buying as it's going higher, I'm walking right Right into who? Sellers. This is why it's so important we get that trap, right? Because a trap allows you to cash a paycheck, move that stop up to point of entry, get rid of the risk before you get your head ripped off as it rolls lower right? Pardon the pardon the, uh, the imagery there, right? Does that make sense though? That's why whenever we see a really big move down like that, we have to get that trap. Big move, strong move. As it goes higher, there are more bears coming in. And so it's really important to get that trap. Now, the easier way to buy it would be looking for the buyers to come in, sorry, the bears to come in, let them hold that pullback and retest that low. As we always say in our trade room, mission accomplished. Anytime we see a strong move, they want to retest that low. Once they retest that low, now all the smart money, they're all getting paid, right? They're getting their, they're getting their profit targets filled at that low. And then we have bring in the rookies, right? Bring in the weak hands. Bring in the inexperienced traders. They now start coming in and they start selling right into that low. I know this because I look for these patterns every day in my trade room and I used to be one of those people selling right into that low here. Now remember, on this one, the bears have already got their short, right? So they're fat and happy. They're well fed now. Now I don't need to be as precise on the entry. I can wait for those stops to get hit and I can use that to try failure now going back up into that trading range, right? Does that make sense there? This is a, this is a really, if you understand what I just talked about right there, you are 98% of the way there, right? If you understand the idea of momentum, when you need traps, when you don't, 
I'll tell you, you'll have you'll have a, you'll have a lot easier job at not only avoiding losses, but being patient, 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 and bam, right there to make money with it. That's what we use every day in our trade room. You'll see examples of that right in our in that free trading course. So that's how we buy it off the low. Now keep in mind that trend line coming down is not going anywhere, right? So as we go lower, double bottom, right? That trend line, that trend line really keeps me from trying to buy that first channel test. Right? We talk a lot about those in these videos. So that's why I'm not talking about that one, right? Because that trend line makes it very, very difficult to take that trade long if it goes higher. Anyways, now, as we go lower, right? A couple things you want to think about here. Okay, let's say, first of all, we pop lower and we grind, right? We pop and we grind, we grind, we grind, right? right? That grinder down, what does that tell you? It tells you the buyers have walked away. The buyers have left the building. Mark off that low, mark off that big high, Right? Now, at this point, all of that momentum, right? All of that momentum says go up and back down to retest. Where's the best entry? Now, I always look for traps, right? I look left, find some prior swings. Oftentimes, they'll love to go right back above those prior swings and they can look for, again, I'm going to keep it simple at this point, right? Trap, failure, pullback combo. And again, at this point now, where's my target? Back to retest the low for sure, and then leave that runner, right? Leave that runner. You've got uh, 1071. Uh, 751 is a good level. It's, it's, a, it's a good level, but the real level they want, the real level they want tomorrow is that that FOMC low down there, right around that 10708 area on the NASDAQ, and I gave you that level earlier on the S&P 500. Or they may take that low out. They may pull back to that 21 moving average, and they may blast, Right now, be aware it's a range, right? They may not, they may end up failing and running back up in. That's why we don't just simply sell that pullback, not in a range environment, right? In a trending market, we do, but not, not in a range market, right? In a range market, we have to wait for a breakout. Once we see them hold that pullback and blast, not just off the moving average, but clear through these lows. Remember, when you have a nice strong move like that, you know one thing is almost guaranteed. Again, nothing's ever guaranteed. When you see a strong move like that, you know it's almost guaranteed that when we pop up, there'll be a ton of bears up there looking for that short, right? That's why, that's why I always tell my students, when you don't know what's going on, just wait for a strong move because strong moves will give you all the info that you need. The hardest part, of course, is waiting for them. You know, that's always the hardest part when you're a new trader is waiting for something to trade, right? Because you don't know exactly what you're waiting for. That's all right, though. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room, I'll make sure you know exactly what we're waiting for here on this. Let's say, for example, let's say, for example, uh, the market makes a really big move down overnight, right? Really, really, really big move down, right? This could also be going higher as well. Let's say the election comes out. There's a huge move down overnight or a huge move up overnight. Whenever I see a really big big, big move overnight, the first thing I always do is, is go looking for a bigger channel, right? Look for a bigger channel and wait for a deeper pullback. Why a deeper pullback? Because nobody's going to want to sell low down here. No one's going to want to sell short at the very lows like that, right? When you see a really big move overnight, and this could also be flip-flopped for a big move higher overnight, we don't want to chase it. What I'll do is I'll find those bigger channels, I'll wait to get up around those bigger channels, and it's pretty easy from there. What happens most of the time on these really big, big pullbacks is the market will start to accelerate and speed up as it goes higher. What happens on these big moves down is you get a bunch of rookies that will go in, right? They'll FOMO, they'll try to get in, and again, because nobody wants to sell low, those those you know kind of more aggressive short sellers they get stopped out of their positions. And when it gets stopped out, it begins to fly higher, right? It begins to pop and run higher because all the stops are, are basically buyers coming into the market. That acceleration as it goes higher is almost never a reversal. Okay, now what you do is, is you simply trap in the buyers, right? So once you see that pop, I always tell my students, once that little voice in your head says, oh my goodness, is this a reversal? Once that little voice starts going, oh my goodness, it's speeding up, maybe it's a reversal, it's probably not a reversal. We're probably pulling back into a bigger spot. Now, trap in those buyers, let those rookies who are thinking it's a reversal, let them get in and you got them. You got them right where you want them, right where their pain is, right where their stops are. And now again, 
big strong move down. They want to retest that low with trapping in buyers using stops as fuel for that move back down again. All right. So I never recommend chasing those big moves lower. Once it begins to pop up and start to accelerate going higher, usually that means it's going to be a great spot for a short off that bigger channel. So keep it in mind. And again, same thing, right? If it rips higher, right? Rips higher, deep pullback, trapping those bears, retest the high, right? Pretty easy game plan there. I'm sure, I'm sure I missed something. And of course, we'll fill the gaps in tomorrow morning in our morning trade room. NASDAQ's done. S&P is done. How about some oil? Wrapping this thing up here tonight on the video newsletter. And by the way, if you're still watching this video right now, 35 minutes into this video right now, that tells me that you are committed. You gotta do whatever it takes to get with me in the trade room because if you're willing to put in this amount of time and watch these videos right now, you got to find a way to get with me in my morning trade room because you'll do really well with this strategy, right? It's one of those things where if you're willing to put the time and effort in, put a little bit of effort in like this, and it's really difficult to mess this up. So kudos to you. If you're still watching right now, you are the person I do these videos for, and I really hope we get a chance to work with you sometime soon in our trade room as a new student. Now, over on the oil, keep in mind, oil is very much news-driven right now. We get some big news coming tomorrow at 1030, but the news we're watching mostly right right now is OPEC, OPEC in China, right? OPEC in China. Uh, China, of course, uh, they had some rumors over the past couple days about uh, easing their uh, zero COVID policy. That drove the market up. And then China came in and says, eh, maybe we're not so ready for it yet. And that drives it right back down. So be aware, oil is very much news driven. China and OPEC are the biggest sticking of pieces to that puzzle right now. China, of course, has had that zero COVID policy for a couple of years now. Um, um, you know, keeping a couple hundred million people locked inside their houses for a while uh, really, really, really decreases the demand for oil. Anyways, there are three key insights right now for the crude oil. One is a strong move lower, which you guys already know what that means, right? Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we're looking for that pullback, look for that pullback, that retest of that low, and possibly that bounce back up again. We shall see, right? We shall see. The next one is a range breakout. There was a range in the chart, and anytime we see a breakout of a trading range, we know that the levels just around that range, right, like that 90-40 area, we know markets love to break out and then pull back. So that, if I had to guess, that would probably be where I would assume the some of the best entries might be on this here for tomorrow around that 90 40 area and then last but not least is that resistance trend line overhead we had kind of joked around about this earlier calling this right what what bull spray right bull repellent because as you can imagine as we go higher are buyers really going to be buying up into that trend line it's a little bit difficult to swallow right now it could happen it definitely could happen but it really sets the bears up right now for a really nice short strong move down looking to sell a pullback right now lots of overhead resistance now you'll notice it's a few different channels in this one right there's one channel right there bigger channel right here this is my favorite variation of that channel right now because it really lines up well here now the key right now is is how does the pullback look okay this is the most important part of the game plan for tomorrow for example if i can get up inside this 89 81 area right up around that 90 area we have so much momentum now for the bears if i can get this price to pull back right now I can then go in and knowing that we have that strong move down, I can look for buyers to walk in, try to buy off this thing, and I can use a simple failure pattern into a pullback combination, right? Pretty simple idea, that failure into pullback combo, back down to retest the low. Uh, I'm basically selling into buyer stops and then grabbing that pullback off the 21 before it retests that low. Very simple combination setup. We learn more about that in that free trading course. However, what we really almost hope happens right now is we almost hope the mark goes higher. Right? We'd love to go up into this trend line overhead. Now, the trend line's a great place to sell short, but what's the problem going to be? Momentum. That's a really, really big move going higher. And anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we have to respect that momentum. And again, even though we have that strong move down, recency is more important. So we have to we have to respect the buyers, right? And to do this now for a short, it's one try for the buyers. It's two try for the buyers. You got it. Trap them in. 
two tries because of the significance of that pullback. And then once those buyers are locked in, we know exactly where their stops are. Now, Remember, the reason why we love these really deep, deep pullbacks is because now we can risk small for a ton of reward. Oftentimes, these things will drop off that high, and then we can find this cherry, nice little channel off this low, and we can find that first test off the high of that channel, right? So kind of keep an eye, keep an eye on that, right? That two try failure. And of course, that right, that uh, that first test is the best test off the high of that channel. Could be a trap, could be a failure, any of those. Now, of course, I'm sure we're wondering at what point does that pullback become a reversal? It's pretty simple. If they can run this thing up, if they can hold a pullback and begin to jump, right? If they can really jump this thing, obviously going going to the trend line, right? Really showing us some strength coming off that 21 moving average. Well, now we know the the market now is going where they're hunting for a full rotation i'll mark off that high i'll mark off that low and remember okay this is not a strong pullback it's a pullback that holds and blasts this is a big difference here this is a reversal this is now a bull trending market now we go out we find those prior swings and again i'll spare you guys the, the, the repeat again but same idea right i want that first test off the low of that channel Traps, failures, pullback, easy. Where do the buyers want to go at that point? They're going to want to go back up and take out these big highs over here, right? If they can get this market reverse, it seems very unrealistic right now. But, you know, hey, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Neither do you. So 92.60, right? That kind of big top that's last week's close. It seems like that would be a very reasonable objective if the buyers can, can kind of pull out a miracle right now. And again, I say that, but who knows, right? China could say, okay, we're done with the COVID restrictions everyone's loose now and this thing will rip right it'll rip overnight so it can easily happen because oil is so news driven last thing here though last thing on the oil if we do keep going lower what's the game plan nothing changes right nothing changes pop it up trapping those buyers sell it back down right big 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 pop up big pop up one two sell it back down again not a lot changes Okay, even if we go sideways down here, even if we end up going sideways here, right, overnight, if we go sideways overnight, it's even better because why? Ranges are magnets. And so if we find a range down here, then they go sideways, pff, easier, right? Easier, same basic idea there. The only variation that you got to be worried about when you have a range like this is sometimes they'll slingshot. So what they'll do is they'll go sideways down here, they'll try to go lower, and then, because, of course, ranges are magnets, they may fake out, break out, and snap back up. Remember, when it does that, find the amount below the range, project it above the range, and then remember, this is a classic case of a rotation off the low, so you want to go one Two. Why two? Because the momentum is so strong as it slingshots off of that low. Still a very good trade right here, here, anywhere up in this area. But just keep that in mind, though. That's the one kind of curveball that ranges love to throw at us. But for the most part, though, ranges are pretty easy. When I see a range, you can, you know, again, can't guarantee anything, but it's almost a guaranteed up and back down into that trading range. And again, big election here coming in overnight. We'll see what happens overnight. We'll come back tomorrow, and we'll, pl and we'll we, the plan is ready now. Tomorrow we'll come back in tomorrow morning, and we'll trade this game plan. Remember, it makes no sense to make predictions. We want to put together a game plan because when you make when you make predictions, you've got one way to make money. When you analyze and prep all the different scenarios, you are, well, you have almost unlimited ways to make money and you're not bound by one specific situation. That's why we do these videos to get our game plan ready, get our mindset ready. Tomorrow we'll come in and we'll trade the stuff together. Now, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, we'll get together. Hopefully, they know the final kind of tabs on the election. That is a big variable right now as we go into tomorrow. But don't forget, tomorrow morning, every morning, we trade the stuff together, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put all the membership links, all the free all the free course links. Grab the free course. You're going to love it. Let me know if you need questions. The easiest way to get help with anything I've talked about tonight is to pick up the phone, call the office, send me an email, use live chat, or drop me a question in the comment section below. Guys, I'm going to wrap things up here for now. Hope you enjoyed the video here tonight. Hope you use this knowledge to crush the markets tomorrow. 
And hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll finally have a good idea of how this election turns out here on this Tuesday evening. All right, guys, as always, be well, be nice to each other, and you better be here tomorrow. All right, guys, adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.